The goal of therapy after having a stroke is to help you make new neural pathways in the brain, or simply put, to rewire the brain so you can regain motor function. What I want to talk about today in this video are two techniques that improve neuroplasticity, but aren't typically utilized in your traditional stroke therapy. You can maximize your progress by stimulating or using more areas of your brain than just repetitive exercise to bring about desired results. So the two techniques I'm going to talk about today are to be utilized along with your traditional repetitive and, consi and consistent uh, movements and exercise. So what are these two techniques? The first one I want to talk about is speaking life into your body. You want to tell your body what you want it to do. And the second one is using visual imagery to tell your body how you want it to move. So let's begin with taking a little closer look at each of these techniques. First of all, our words matter. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. We can use our words to encourage us, to motivate us, to bring us joy, to bring us happiness, or our words can be used to zap us of those things. Study after study has been done that demonstrates the power of our words and the power of our words on our health, on our own bodies, on the health of our children, on the health of our pets, even the health of our plants. So why not use that knowledge to bring about benefits of our own health? So it's up to you to speak life into your body part that you want to move. And how do you do that? Well, you tell it what you want it to do. For example, if your arm isn't moving, um, you know, you can say arm move, but to be more specific, you can say arm grab the cup, leg kick the ball, I see the letters. And the more specific you are, the more your brain is activating to accomplish that desired movement. If you just say move, or you're just thinking about having your arm move, that's really not telling the brain what you want it to happen. So the more specific you are, the more your brain understands and can make those connections. And just to give you an example, I had this one lady who had this flailing arm. She had a stroke and the arm was just kind of doing its own thing as she was talking. And she had no control over that arm. And as I'm working with her, I said, ma'am, you need to get control of that arm and tell it what to do. Tell that arm to rest by your side. So amazingly, as soon as she told this arm, arm, rest by my side, it just went right down to her side. And what was so amazing is by the end of one treatment session, this lady could take that flailing arm, uh, reach out, grab a paper cup, bring it to her mouth, and then set it back down without crushing that paper cup just by telling that arm what to do. And, you know, it's not always going to be that easy and it's not always going to work. For some people, it may. But the point of the matter is with neuroplasticity, the more you can activate that brain, the more information you can give it to what you want it to do in terms of moving a limb or, like I said before, you know, uh, improving your vision or what have you, the, the, the more specific you can be, the more opportunities that brain can make other connections to make that happen. And just another example, I had a gentleman who had a stroke and uh, he was trying to toss a ball up. And when he thought about it, he had just thought about tossing the ball, it couldn't happen. But when he told his arm, arm toss the ball, 
and you didn't think about it, then he could toss that ball. So, like I said, you never know what's going to work. And at this stage of the game, I would suggest the more information you can give your brain, the more input, the better. And like anything with stroke rehabilitation, things aren't probably going to work the first time. They may, that's great. But if they don't, don't give up. Just keep trying it. Keep feeding life. Keep speaking life into your body part till you see it happen. So this leads me into the second method, which is mental imagery or using your mind's eye to visualize, to see yourself doing the activity you want to be doing. And I'm sure you've heard of, you know, many athletes using mental imagery to really refine and hone certain motor skills. And they do that by seeing themselves, for instance, shooting the hoops and making that basket every time, or they see their body, how they want their body to respond to a ball being pitched and how they want to be swinging that bat and how they want to see it all connect. Um, and, and so they focus in on repeatedly um, seeing themselves in action just by closing their eyes and imagining it. And so that principle uh, can be applied to stroke survivors. And again, study after study has been done for stroke survivors and that it does aid in regaining motor function. So how to do it is you see yourself like I said, doing an activity you want to be accomplishing. And the best thing to do is to try to incorporate all your senses in doing it. For example, if you want to use your hand to begin feeding yourself and you're unable to do it, then you know, close your eyes and imagine yourself picking up that fork. Imagine what that feels like in your hand you know, feel the smooth coolness of the metal. And then imagine making those wrist movement movements to stab a piece of food and see yourself bringing it up to your mouth, feeling the cool metal on your lips. Um, and, you know, just this whole process of that specific activity and seeing it again and again and again. And you can even use visual imagery to not only help in the neuroplasticity of the brain, but helping you relax. For example, if you um, enjoy bike riding and you would like to see yourself riding a bike, well, go ahead and visualize yourself walking to the bike, um, putting your leg over the bike and start pedaling. Feel your legs alternating uh, back and forth. Feel the breeze in your hair. Smell the freshness of nature and see yourself turning and keeping your balance. And, you know, spend five, ten minutes a day, maybe three times a day, going through this process. And what happens is, you know, even though your body isn't physically making those movements, in your mind, it's happening. So just like with professional athletes, you're really fine tuning and honing those skills just by thinking about them. So give it a try. Remember, consist when it comes to neuroplasticity, consistency and repetition is the key. So you can only enhance your progress by using your traditional therapy along with speaking life into your body and visual imagery. Why not give it a try? See how it does for you. And be sure to let me know in the comment box. Until next time.